If you're an eventing enthusiast in, in America, Kentucky Horse Park and the Kentucky Three Day Event is where everybody wants to go, right? If you have anything to do with eventing, that is the one weekend in, in the year that we as riders sort of matter. And um, the only event in this country where you can guarantee that the best riders and best horses are going to show up every year. Obviously a special place to me in that part of the reason that Horse Park came about was because my dad won the world championship and uh, then he subsequently uh, ended up winning his second world championship there. We've had a lot of success there as a family and um, it's a place that, um, you know, every spring we, uh, we put on our calendar the, the last weekend of April to go to Kentucky. Going out and doing, you know, an effort like Kentucky, you know, it's obviously a big effort, but you have to, you know, you have to believe in the people that you put in place to make you successful. And the reality is, if you uh, if you want to ride in Kentucky, you got to go where the competition is, and uh, you can't do that from Colorado. Left Colorado February 1st, headed down to Florida. Took six horses with me down in Florida at Buck's Farm. And have just been training hard kind of in Florida and um, traveling back and forth Colorado um, to just make sure everything at home is as it should be, and just sent the, the rest of the horses home uh, on Monday. So now I just get to focus on Bravi. Bravi feels great, and so I'm, uh, I'm excited, I'm excited. I can't remember, you know, how many years ago she came and sort of got lessons with me, but we sort of had a conversation about if you want to get to the top, it's not really about lessons. It's about getting into a program that you can do everything, you know, and it's not just the X's and O's of teaching lessons. It's more being instead of the teacher that you're actually the coach, right? And you can kind of, it gets in a little bit more in depth than you kind of understand the personality and kind of what makes them work. and understanding the horses and what makes them work, that takes some time, right? And um, and just the same as the as a coach. Um so I married my amazing husband in California and uh, um he met his, part, his business partner in California and convinced him to move to Seattle. And I absolutely did not want to move to Seattle. I thought it was terrible. I thought I moved to California and thought it was the best place in the world. And he was like, no, 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 I've got, I've got it, all the people lined up for you. And um, basically like lined me up with Amy and it was just really the most amazing experience. Um, Kind of got into Amy's barn day one and uh, traveled with her across the country, across the world. And um, yeah, it was amazing, amazing. Oh my gosh, Amy Tryon. She is an incredible person. Um, was an incredible person. Like I don't even want to talk about her in past tense because uh, she still lives with me uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and um, it's pretty incredible. Um, for sure a mentor, uh, she was just unreal. Um, unbelievable horseman, um, unbelievable rider. 
and uh, living the dream, living, uh, and I kind of, I think, established where my dreams wanted to go. Um, I think kind of my takeaway, like she always wanted to have her hands on the horses, always wanted to touch, and I always need to touch. I need to feel like what's going on, and um, I feel like that's very important to me. Uh, yeah, she's, she's brought a lot, brought a lot to the table. Pretty incredible, pretty incredible. I think she'd be proud today. Seven years? I don't know. Oh, since I was 20. So, okay. when did you guys meet? 21 years. Um, met at Amy's. She was a, um, just moved into Seattle area and was riding and training with Amy. And we were going to be leaving for our first trip east. And um, Amy had said that we were going to be taking the new girl along with us who had just moved in. And I wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I showed up at the barn and Danny was a short, cute, bubbly, happy, um, wonderful person that I resented because she had been there a hot minute <laughs> and got to go east with us. <laughs> And then I thought I'd be driving with Amy, and uh, Amy's like, oh, no, you're driving with Danny. And I was like, fuck, can I swear? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so we got in the car, and by the time we made it out the driveway, we were best friends. <laughs> How do you think it's going to go this weekend? I think she's more prepared than she was last year, and I think he looks super. So I think, yeah, I think she's going to have a good weekend. Are you worried about anything? I haven't walked the course on purpose, so no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, Bravi. He l loves to have his face rubbed, but is very skeptical of strangers. <laughs> it's like, what is he like? He loves Mrs. Pasture's cookies for sure. <laughs> um, it's kind of a funny dude. He's like very. Uh, you know, like he's he he knows he's a high performer, so he's like pretty serious guy. Doesn't like to mess around. He he'll like correct the other horses if they're having too much fun, like in the trailer. He's like, get it together. <laughs> to get the next season started, he'll uh, he'll be a little wild. Um. So back in the day, Amy is her favorite movies was Miss Congeniality, and in one of the scenes, Sandra Bullock is on stage, and um, I think it's Michael Caine, yeah. uh, is trying to tell her to, to be the crown, wear the crown, you are the crown, and you make this motion to wear the crown, and so Amy always, before she went in the ring, would do that to us, and we would do it to her, and so before Danny arrives and he fades, we give her a little crown motion. Oh, you lost your crown.
So there was a, a really hard coffin fence that fairly early in the course, like it maybe spent six, seven, something like that. There was one line that was on the left, I believe, that like the obvious line, but quite frankly, it just wasn't riding very well. So I kind of just ran and grabbed Danny and said, come on, let's go look at this. I think we're gonna go a different way. So we went down there and kind of changed the plans, but that's kind of, you know, the kind of stuff you can do when you're not just giving somebody a riding lesson, but you know how they are mentally and, you know, what, you know, what's best for the horse. And um, I knew that, you know, that Danny could handle, handle that mentally. <clears throat> She's extremely focused and, um, you know, we need to plan the best route, give her and her horse the, the best chance to be successful. The, the four-star competition that was at Kentucky this year um, was, quite frankly, maybe more competitive than the five-star um, in that a lot of the horses going to the Olympic Games um, were just doing a, a shorter format, which is the level of the uh, uh, of the Olympics. And so um, um, a lot of the top horses were in the four-star just um, to prove <clears throat> to the selectors that they could, uh, you know, that they were healthy and fit and going well and um, compete in that, the big atmosphere that is the Kentucky 3 day event. This year was a unique and kind of maybe a one-off year, but the, the four-star was probably more competitive than the five-star. You know how close you can get yeah. and how the slightest little thing can go wrong. And yeah. it is, like you said, you know, the stars have to line up perfectly yeah. to come to a four or yeah. five star. Yeah. It's just all the things that have to come together. Yeah. It, it's so nice to see people, especially local people that you've been around for so many years, you know, put in the sweat and the tears and the work and the money and the time and also being helpful of everybody else along the way. They didn't forget about everybody else. No. And, you know, yeah. they're part of this team, part of this village going forward. So it's really nice to see them get, you know, what their dreams have been yeah. to get to that. Yeah, so I agree. It feels good for all of us, you know, it takes yeah. a village to get everybody yeah. there. And all of us have little parts. Okay. You know, you as a husband, you as a friend, a groomer, yeah. you know, some of us helping with other parts of yeah. stuff. So it's really rewarding. Amy would have been proud. Amy was a, I cried like Amy a baby. Is, Amy is with this speaker. I cried so hard. <laughs> We're cracking. <laughs> but it's hard. This weekend's hard. There's, you know, very good things and there's really tough things. And... Yeah. I'm going to take a ride up there later. Good. I have already been up there. So yesterday, Bravi came off cross country without a shoe, which, you know, is never a good feeling because you don't know necessarily where they pulled it or how long they ran without it um, so we 
wrapped up his foot and made sure that he was feeling okay. So some horses uh, might lose a shoe on cross country and um, you know, you don't know like how they pulled it or whatever, but they can, it can definitely create an issue. Um, like they can step on the clip, they can, you know, maybe they need, maybe they really need the shoes. Um, you know, just depends on their anatomy, but um, there's certainly a lot of problems that can happen. So wanna, you don't wanna brush it off lightly that, oh, they just pulled a shoe, but I'll, you know, like it can be, it can be serious and it can be fine. So it's one of those things. I feel like all the little details with the horses, it's like you take it seriously, so it is fine. Um, you know, I crossed the finish line and uh, I was asked, uh, Molly, like, do I have four shoes? Do I have four shoes? I want to know. I want to know if I have four shoes. That's uh, super important to me. And uh, um, I, uh, I lost a right front shoe and, uh, and uh, knowing that he, he did the majority of the course with all of his shoes, that was, that was super important to me. So, um, I'm not, I actually, I really don't know where I lost it, um, but it was definitely after uh, Fence 17, so um, not far from home, so I'm pretty happy with that. I always like to kind of get the shoe put on, see what they look like. He, uh, he is a powerhouse, like he, put the shoe back on and it was like, hey, yeah, let's go. We got a job to do here. <laughs> it was really special to be in the jog. Like that's, that was awesome. I was a course designer for Beijing for, for the Olympic Games, and, and, I, and I had the honor to be able to set the, an Olympic track for, for the eventing. This is probably my fifth year as a course designer here, and I have seen the quality of riding get better and better over the four years that I've been here. We bring them in here on the third day test, uh, everything has to get careful. Everything is a little bit more related, not so many strides in between jumps. So the riders, it's a completely different ride from the day before. And I find that that's what they have to train for. And maybe I'm wrong, but I think that 11AB could be the test, a little bit more of the test for the rider, uh, cause it's on a broken line. It's not a straight fence in front of them. They got to jump 10, break a little bit, hold on to the horse and find the spot that he wants to put him at. And I, I, I find that my, to analyze it myself, I would say that for me, just looking at it before the class starts, that, that could be a place that the riders have to be more accurate. And the horses are got to be starting to get tired now. We're at the end. You know, and from last night to today, wasn't a lot of sleep or a lot of recovery time for what they did. That that was pretty strenuous out across the country here. So that's where I am with my course today. Fabulous as usual. You know, cross your fingers and let Robbie do his thing. Is there anything particular in the course that you think he'll have trouble with? No. <laughs> I don't. He's fully capable. He's fully capable. And Danny's fully capable. 
so I am uh, have no concerns there. I just am kind of a nervous nervous show mom here. But the wedding is agonized. And of course you want them to do well. So. Oh my god. Clear? Yeah. All the way? All the way. No time? Nothing. No time. Holy cow. I know. Pretty oh. amazing. Oh my god. Still the coolest things that can happen to, to me or any other event riders to be able to experience jumping and clean round on Sunday when it matters. And, um, you know, the it gets so loud and everybody gets so excited and the fans go crazy and we don't get that any other event anywhere else quite frankly even in the world and so it's really cool and have that feeling i mean like you never know if that's going to happen again right like it's you know you always hope it's going to but there's a lot of really good riders that never felt that experience you know and then get to finish it off and get you know that appreciation from everybody um it's, uh, uh, you can't really describe the feeling, and um, that was about as good as it gets. You know, obviously it was unbelievably fulfilling to see Danny come from Colorado and put up that performance, but to go in there and be up against all these guys that are going to the Olympics, you know, it kind of doesn't really matter what the what happens at the other events the rest of the year, but because the place that you need to show up and and do your best and kind of bring your A game is Kentucky. And um, for that to happen and her to do all three phases as good or better than she's doing in training is uh, super exciting and it uh, bodes well for the future. Going down that ramp, everything was calm, quiet. There was no noise. There was nothing. And uh, it was just contentment. 